Thank you, Madam, <coughs> Madam Speaker. Colleagues, I rise to speak to Government Motion Number 152. This motion amounts to the use of a Committee of the Whole as a pre-study of Bill C-62. I want to be clear at the outset that what I am considering will be discussing the process of our study of Bill C-62. This is not about my views, or frankly about your views, or anybody's views on the subject matter. It should be about the process we should be taking as an institution. There is a very concerning trend that has emerged in the past years. Our chamber of sober second thought is increasingly a rubber stamp. We have allowed this because of a minority parliament where brinkmanship is crucial to seeing anything accomplished. While there have been many times where we may have thought that this was the right decision, I strongly believe, colleagues, that on this occasion, we must take the time to do a more thorough and a considerable investigation on the study of this bill. A two-hour committee of the whole does not meet this standard. Bill C-62 represents an evolution in one of the most challenging public policy discussions here in Canada in the last decade. Medical assistance in dying is a hotly contested issue that engages our democracy in extraordinarily challenging ways. As our country's chamber of sober second thought, with a constitutional requirement to conduct rigorous debate before making decision, 130 minutes is not enough. Hearing from the honorable ministers and no other Canadians is not enough. Regardless of the final decision that we make on this bill, I would assert that a committee of the whole in the manner described in this motion would result in a failure, our failure, to fulfill our role here in the Senate. We must be mindful that Canadians are watching. But more important than that, we must keep ourselves accountable. More than that, we must look back on this week, a few years down the road, and we must be proud of our work, not embarrassed that we failed to meet the moment. I want us to reflect on a recent experience we have had here in the Senate, where in another instance, we were forced to make a rash and speedy decision. I'm thinking about Bill C-28. This bill was adopted and given royal assent four sitting days after it was introduced in the other place, in June of 2022, following a Supreme Court ruling in May of that year. You will recall, colleagues, the collective unease we felt. Our esteemed colleagues from the Standing Committee on Legal and Constitutional Affairs were relegated to become reviewers, not legislators. And we did not benefit from their sober second thought on that bill at that time. And there were negative consequences to our quick work on that bill. In April of last year, after a thorough study, the committee noted that witnesses consulted, that witnesses that were consulted on that bill felt that their consultations were insufficient. They had concerns about the harms <coughs> C-28 would cause, including a disproportionate impact on marginalized women. The witnesses believed that C-28 lacked clarity and lacked precision potentially resulting in the spread of disinformation and uncertainty about the law. Preventing such issues is the exact reason that the Senate exists. We exist to bring clarity, to ensure equity, and to meaningfully engage Canadians. In light of this recent history, and facing a subject matter that is enormous, 
in its social, legal, and medical implications. I'm particularly concerned that we must do our due diligence on Bill C-62. Medical dying in assistance is an issue that engages a multiple dimension of public policies. Much of our discussions within this chamber are made focused on the legal, constitutional implications of the bill. As a result, the sunset clause in Bill C-7, more of a focus has been brought to the health system's implication of MAID. This is the center of the government's argument for Bill C-62. But I would propose there is a third dimension to consider, the dimension of public opinion. Now, as unelected senators, we relate to the public somewhat differently than our elected colleagues. And this, I believe, strengthens our democracy. One important way that we relate to the public is through amplifying their voice in our committee process. I think we would be naive if we did not consider the role of politics and public opinion have had in bringing us here today. There is no doubt that we need to be mindful of these forces, but we must not be intimidated by these forces. We must not be rushed. We must not be relegated to become simple reviewers. We are legislators. We must do our job. This is even more important because it seems that the other place will likely send the bill through with minimal scrutiny on this occasion as well. Colleagues, I believe we must look deeper into the legal and health systems implications of this bill, the, the assertions that are at the origin, including those in the report of the Joint Special Committee. Some believe that a minimum, the time for Committee of the Whole should be doubled. 12 slots of 10 minutes, even split, allows us a, f a fraction of us the opportunity to ask questions, and certainly does not allow for deep and thorough study. But I think we should be going further. I believe more thorough and detailed pre-study of the subject matter of Bill C-62 is a necessary step. I'd argue that the Standing Committee on Social Affairs and the Legal Committee should consider the subject matter. So she should consider it as it was put, put, it was put forward by the Health Minister. And because a central question to the subject matter is the readiness of the healthcare system. LCJC should study the bill because of the important cons constitutional considerations. I believe committees should welcome both ministers, of course, as well as the chairs of the Special Joint Committee on Medical Assistance in Dying. But they should also bring in legal experts, health regulators, Canadians with lived experience, and other concerned parties. This is, there is an important distinction to be made here, colleagues, between the mandate of Ahmad and the mandate of us here in the Senate. The Special Joint Committee on Medical Assistance in Dying had a mandate in its most recent iteration, quote, to verify the degree of preparedness attained for a safe and adequate application of MAID in mental illness as the sole underlying medical condition, end of quote. As a result of the committee's recommendation, new legislation has been developed. And now we have a mandate with new legislation that is coming our way. As with every other piece of new legislation that comes our way. As legislators, we have a mandate to review, to scrutinize every bill, including those that emerge from prior work done by the Parliament. And this is all I'm proposing to be done for C-62. A pre-study in committee provides us with an opportunity for scrutiny from a broader set of senators fresh perspectives with a, a specific focus on the bill that is now before us. Canadians are watching, colleagues, and they are ready to come and they are ready to speak to us. 
and we must be ready to listen. And even if we can only organize a few meetings, that is better than nothing. Colleagues, adding on to this committee of the whole pre-study with committee pre-studies would allow us to go deeper and to make the best use of our time. I know this might be considered to be labor intensive than what is being proposed by the motion, but I also know that you are willing to do this work. It is most important to note that this pre-study does not, cannot, slow down the process of Bill C-62 when it comes to us and would allow the bill to <coughs> proceed even before the committee reports, if that be the case. This is about process, colleagues. It is about us doing our job. You all know, honorable senators, how important this is. You know because you have seen countless reports in the media. You've seen this issue become a political football. You've read emails from thousands of Canadians in the past years. And I believe we all feel a collective duty to make every reasonable effort to get this right. Regardless of how we feel on this topic, you know, dear colleagues, that anything short of our best effort is failing Canadians. Therefore, in amendment, I move, <coughs> seconded by the Honorable Senator Pattison, that the motion be not now adopted, but that it be amended by adding the following after the words, the Senate adjourns, and that the Standing Senate Committee on Legal and Constitutional Affairs and the Standing Senate Committee on Social Affairs, Science and Technology be each authorized in accordance with Rule 10-11-1 to examine the subject matter of Bill C-62 in advance of the said bill coming before the Senate and that for the purposes of these studies, each of these committees, one, submits its final report to the Senate no later than February the 27th, 2024. Two, have the power to meet, even though the Senate may then be sitting or adjourned with rules 12-18-1 and 12-18-2 being suspended in relation thereto. Three, hold its first meeting on the subject matter of the bill at the latest on Thursday, February the 15th, 2024, if this motion is adopted by then. And four, be authorized to deposit its report with the clerk of the Senate if the Senate is not then sitting. Thank you.